I wanted to take a look at some lead generation landing pages in some very competitive and very expensive markets and see what we could learn from them and take away from them. So I did a search here for auto insurance for Camry. And for those of you guys not familiar with the insurance markets, advertising in that market is very, very expensive and competitive and more so on Google pay-per-click. Hell, what is not very competitive and very expensive on Google pay-per-click these days, but it is just outrageous for any type of insurance. So I did the search for auto insurance for Camry here. We're gonna open up these landing pages and take a look at them. Now, for those of you guys out there not familiar with who I am and new to the channel, I'm Corey. I've been in the online business space since 2009, and I also own and operate some offline home service businesses that grow through lead generation, and I also do lead generation as a service for clients that buy leads and Basically, since 09, I have been generating leads online, so damn, that's almost 15 years now. Now let's jump into it with the first website here, which is the Zebra. And what I wanna point out is that there's a very big focus on the conversion objective. So notice when we get to this landing page, the focus is right here on this basically get started button, right? Enter your zip code and then click the button to get started. There's not a navigation around here they're not giving you a call to action for any other type of content. There is a little bit of focus on this section here, which shows some brand association. We'll come back to that, but the big focus is on that one conversion objective. Now, I think this is really important because a lot of people think, well, we need to have the menu up here. We need to show them some of our blog posts and our other content, all of this stuff, right? And this actually came up here in a Reddit thread I was looking at that was talking about landing pages with stripped out navigation. And this user was saying, I always feel uneasy about stripping out the navigation and by extension, the main website away. Okay, now this thought comes up for people that comes up from people that have a real heavy content marketing background. They're just used to shoving content down people's throat and hoping and praying that they convert. When it comes to lead generation and specifically landing pages for paid advertising, throw that out the window. You just need to focus on that conversion objective. And if we look at any of these others here, we will see it again. Focus on that conversion objective. They clearly want you to enter your zip code and start the quote. And I'd guess that if you select a map icon here, it probably loads you up maybe with some text that says, we have quotes ready to go in North Dakota. We have agents in North Dakota. Same thing here on this next one. Big focus on that conversion objective. And finally, again, here on this one, big focus on the on the conversion objective. There's really nowhere else that they're trying to direct the user to. Yes, some of them will have menus in the footer, which is really for legal purposes or to kind of get other people that might navigate around the website to their applicable place. Like if an insurance agent comes to this website, here's how they can get started buying these leads, etc. But again, that's buried in the footer. So the big focus and the number one thing here is, well, a focus on the conversion objective and more specifically, a defined conversion objective that is going to trigger a conversion result in whatever advertising campaign uh, or advertising platform you're running ads on. You're gonna see that in every high volume, big spend lead generation landing page. Number two, let's talk about this here, and I call this the action proposition. Some people might call it the value proposition. I call it the action proposition. Either way, it is the text or copy that is directing the user to ultimately take action and tell them why they should. And in this case, it is your one-stop shop for comparing auto and home insurance quotes. And you're gonna see these are very similar across all websites. If you can come up with something differentiated to generate leads or generate leads in a different way, and there are niche, you know, niches out there in websites and businesses that do this, uh, generally, they're handling the leads internally, right? They're not reselling them. Like all these examples here are reselling the leads. But some businesses, like if we went to a branded, say, progressive website, they might have some type of different value or, or action proposition or value proposition for their landing pages. But it's going to be clearly defined near the objective that they want you to focus on. But again, we'll see it here. Right, cheap liability auto insurance quotes, fast and free car insurance quotes. Let's drop your rate in Estero. Hey, they've dynamically inserted my city today. That's a nice feature, but I really don't think that's necessary for success. In fact, you see the other three did not mention my city in there. Big thing is though, is they have got that action proposition 
front and center on these websites. Next up is brand relationships. Showing brand relationships on the landing page helps. And we can see they're doing that right here by showing the, uh, the actual companies that you might get quotes from. All right, so they're putting these brand relationships up here. These are companies you know, recognize, and trust in that space. And showing you that, hey, by coming through here, you know, you're ultimately going to get quotes from all of these. Now, I will tell you that not all of these are you going to get quotes from when you come through here, right? They're going to match us with whoever's paying the highest. Some of these might not be buying in your location, et cetera, like that. They certainly have relationships with them and you could get matched with them, uh, but not all of them. That's just the way lead generation works, so to say. But the big thing to take away for landing page purposes is that they are showing you their brand relationships. And we'll probably see this on others. Yeah, here they are right there. Um, here we are right here. And we'll see it, no doubt, right here. Next up, let's talk about this here. The steps to completing the form. Showing these steps does generally enhance conversions a little bit. Mind you, the offer in the audience is really what the big magic sauce here. And then the value proposition or the action proposition, right? Does your, does your audience want this offer of car insurance? Do they feel like the value proposition is enough to get them to take action? That Those are like your big ingredients on the landing page. Then ship, breaking down and showing the steps can help. Brand relationships, I would say, again, help more than the um, the steps here, but it is nice to have the steps. And I do see improvement when we can put, break out the steps and use that to explain what's going to happen here. And it also enhances lead quality because they know that multiple people usually will be contacting them. So um, yeah, you can see it right here. Compare and choose the right policy for you. You might hear speak with three insurance agents to get your best quote. When the user knows they're going to get multiple quotes, it does, by and large, help the lead quality. So they're not like, whoa, I'm overwhelmed with everything that's coming back at me after I submitted my information here. And then finally, social proof. Um, let's see if we got it on here. Yeah, we made friends with over 200 insurance companies. I was going to thought that was going to say something about social proof and neighbors. Here, they're giving social proof uh, in the form of testimonials from brands. So it's like a brand relationship social proof example. One other example that I've seen of this is something that would kind of go up here on the page, pretty, you know, pretty much high up on the page, above the fold, so to say, front and center, uh, that might show a counter that says, you know, over 10,000 drivers have requested an estimate in the last 30 days, right? And it's kind of like an animated counter going up. This one doesn't really have much social proof on it. I don't think any of these do. Yeah, there's some social proof right here. Social proof elements will generally help a little bit. Surprise, they have some, you know, what appears to be content. And these might be like advertorials. Actually, I'm going to guess that they're like an advertorial so that when they come here, it ultimately drives them back into it because this is a very well put together page on a, you know, on a primo domain, insurance.com certainly ran by somebody that knows exactly what the fuck they're doing here with lead generation. So that's it. Let's just recap on it. What can we take away from it? A, clear defined call to action and con clear defined conversion objective with a call to action. And I'm calling that call to action essentially the action proposition, which is telling them why they should take it. So there's one and two. Number three, if we can give them some context of the steps that are going to happen in the process and what's going to happen. Number four, brand relationships. Number five, social proof. And I think the big takeaway here is that these pages are not award winning. Like none of these pages are winning an award for best design landing page. Simple and effective that hits these four or five key points, best practices or principles, so to say will really be effective for lead generation. On that note, guys, I hope you found this video helpful and insightful. If you did, be sure to do me a sweet one, hit that like button, do yourself a sweet one, and hit that subscribe button so you get all of my insights on digital marketing and paid advertising. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'm signing off.